So I'm Jonathan Greenberg. I'm a senior solutions engineer with Kinetica. So I'll start off with um, you know a little background on the company. It was founded in 2009. In 2011, Kinetica received its first patent. Its first production of deployment uh, happened in 2012. The product became commercially available in 2013 and was immediately recognized by the IDC with the Innovation Excellence Award. In June of 2017, uh, Kinetica completed its first Series A round of investment for $50 million, which was one of the largest ever awarded. Kinetica can take the evolving GPU architecture, the vectorized construction hardware innovations, a step further by creating a platform that works exactly like a database, but it's optimized to leverage all of the GPU hardware and software innovations behind the scenes. So there's no need for the complex GPU custom programming that drove a lot of the, you know, the rise of GPU for machine learning workloads. By mainstreaming the brute force compute of GPUs within a database platform, without the constraint and administrative overhead of a database, this architecture potentially can represent the next wave of querying compute performance, where the cost benefit of these latest software and hardware innovations start to deliver significantly higher compute on less hardware with less overhead to implement and maintain. And because we're like a database, but don't have the constraints of a database, streaming uh, real-time updates while you're querying is absolutely possible. You can stream data to Kinetica, you can be landing it and updating a table, and you can be querying it with your BI tool all at the same time. If you're new to GPUs, they're essentially high-performance video cards that utilize thousands of tiny processing cores to compute massive computational workflows in parallel. And Kinetica utilizes this hardware acceleration in harmony with CPUs and BI tools and platforms connect to it just like any other traditional database. It was astounding. They were able to take a 42-node Exadata Oracle cluster that was producing results in an hour and a half and put one node with GPU cards in it and take that same set of calculations and, and bring them down to a couple seconds. It's a very compelling use case because of the sheer reduction in the hardware and the compute performance that you've got out of the same operation. And we also manage ingestion in a distributed way, which is another big selling point for us where we're parallelizing all of those updates across the cluster. So we're you know, dividing and conquering all that work to ingest the data along with the distributed compute and along with the GPU enhancement. So all of those things play, I think, to our advantage. Larger complex streaming data sets are now possible for BI. We could render and plot billions of points on a map in sub-second and the same platform can bring you the machine learning compute in the same place, leveraging the same persistent data set in one platform, there's a huge opportunity there. Because it's not just about our speed, our scale, the fact that we can run these things, but now, what if I'm a BI analyst that wants to leverage the data science, but rather than me you know, having a person that I ship the data to and it runs off site and then they come back to explain the results, I've got my algorithm working the way I want. Let me, as the business owner, iterate on these different scenarios and then run them through those machine learning algorithms to get the outcome. You're converging the ease of use and accessibility of BI with AI, and we see that as a huge opportunity. It's all about being the fastest database on the planet. We're a commodity hardware, commodity OS software platform, so we don't care what server hardware you use, we don't care what you know Linux OS, pick your favorite, and then plug in those GPU cards and our software will take care of the rest. And it's a linear scalable technology. It's columnar and in memory, you know, as a relational type database, tools look at it like anything else. You can write your own SQL and, and talk to it. Again, if you're doing specialized data appliances or data lakes, Spark clusters, and you're needing more speed and more scale, you know, that's the time where it makes sense to, you know, bring us in and, and take a look at what we can do with the architecture. And we can do multi-head, multi-thread ingestion. You can parallelize either streaming from a file um, and breaking it up into multiple streams of data for Spark support connectors that can do this as well. And then by dividing the workload across the cluster and doing portions of it, right, that parallelization gives you that massive ingestion speed. So, you know, in a modest cluster, we can get um, a million rows a second, a couple million rows a second. Um, on a larger cluster, um, we've seen several billion records per minute. So at those ingestion speeds, you could quickly stream or land or you know push very large data sets to Kinetica, and then you can pretty much do what you want from there. So if you invest in Kinetica for the immediate performance gain, you're kind of future-proofing for the next wave, which is you know handling that ML workloads as well on the same platform, leveraging the same data set.